Good day brothers and sisters and uh, welcome to our viewing number five in the series the lettering and uh, we are in uh, number five the final demonstration and so I pray that the Lord will bless us and we shall be encouraged at such a time as this amidst all that is happening around the world we have an encouragement that Christ is a victim of everything the very charge of Satan has been that God can have, can have people who can walk in the image of his son it has it has been his avowed struggle and to make sure that uh, they do not have a time who will present him fully but uh, we know that uh, the victory of Jesus Christ is our victory. Yeah. Because it means that we can have a people who can also walk in his statutes and be conformed to the of his son. We want to look at the final demonstration in this uh, evening wherever you are tuned in welcome and uh, as before i continue for a word of prayer and the final demonstration this is the lettering series this is the number five in the series of 21 presentations and so let us pray as we begin father in heaven Thank you and we glorify your name. We do pray that you speak to us in thy tenderest voice. That we may know what the Spirit is speaking to the churches and what you are doing at such a time as this and the army that is lazy to finish the work. And abide with us and let thy prayer fill our minds that we may not be distracted by anything but we may do the preparations necessary to sound the loud cry and be among us the people who will welcome Christ in the air of the clouds. Thank you for everything. Thank you for loving us this much. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, Christ is waiting for the manifestation of himself in the church that he may seal up his people he may have a people who are consecrated unto him a people who are ready to 
take possession of the kingdom. And that is why we are looking today at the final demonstration. Sanctuary is the plan of redemption. And we know it reveals the will of God upon his people. And how the blood of the lambs and goats were offered. But we are told in the book of Hebrews that Jesus Christ entered into the most holy place into heavens, not with the blood of the lambs and goats, but with his own blood. He entered into the tabernacle not made by hands of men. And Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. This is what we read from verses 11. Hebrews 9, verses 11. Brothers and sisters, we need to know the times that we are living in and what is expected of us. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11, we read, Christ being come on a high priest of good things to come by a great and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in one in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us and so if the blood of the bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling and clean sanctified with the purifying of flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So, right in verse 14, we are assured of victor over sin, we are assured of the people who will have the final demonstration in the sanctuary illustrates that even in a most vivid way that Christ is going to have a people who will reflect him. Just a quick pointer. 6,000 years ago when the son understood his plan and arguments and them. 2,000 years ago that is at Calvary, angels and unfallen ones understood certain plans and arguments and rejected them. Near the future, and we are talking about the time that you are living in, the 144 will understand Satan's plan and argument and will reject them. That is the book of Revelation, chapter 14, and starting from verse 1, we are looking at the presentation demonstration can God have a people who will just look like Christ Revelation chapter 14 and I looked below a lamb stood on Mount Zion and with him on a hundred forty and four thousand had his father's name written in their foreheads and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and, and as the voice of a great thunder and I heard the voice of harpers harping their harps, and they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb, and in their mouth was no found guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. We are talking about the final uh, demonstration. Can God have a people on the earth who will just look like Christ? And so we find that the 144 will be there, and in their mouths there is no guile. The book 
of the book of first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 and we are looking from verse 1 this illustration for here unto why he called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did not sin, neither was found in his mouth. You see this phrase who in his mouth was found no guide, brothers and sisters. And we have read the 144, there is no guide in their mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, not sin any more, by whose stripes you are healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. We saw that the hundred and forty-four have the father's name in their forehead. And what is so much important about having the father's name in their forehead? Look with me in the book of John chapter 17. John chapter 17 verses 6. The book of John, chapter 17, verses 6. That all, I have manifested my name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world, thine they were, and thou gavest me, and they have kept thy word. Now, there is something so important with the Father's name that Christ manifested the Father's name. And the the 144 are sealed with the Father's name, they also have to manifest the Father's name as Christ even manifested it. And we know that a name represents character. And he says uh, in verses 11, Going downwards, verse 11, look at what Christ says. Look here, brothers and sisters. We are looking at the final demonstration. Will Christ have a people who are just like him? Christ, in verse 6, manifested the Father's name. The 144 has the Father's name. And in verse 11 of John 17, we are told, And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are one. And so the 144 are kept by the Father's name, which Christ himself manifested. And how did Christ manifest this name? How? did Christ manifest the name of the Father that he made sure that he walked according to the will of the Father. He says that not my will but thy will O Father. Look at verses 22 of John chapter 17. How did he manifest the name of the Father? The name means character, and look at verse 22 of John chapter 17, we read John chapter 17 verses 22, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. I want to notice one thing, Christ manifested the of the Father, the 144 having the Father's name, and the manifestation of the name is walking according to the will of God, 
and it is this name that keeps them and the name is the glory the glory is in the name now i have given them that they may be verse 22 look at verse 11 again and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come to thee holy father keep thy through thine own name thy own name i hope you are saying things brothers and sisters through thy own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are one now look here carefully the father's name if they are kept by the father's name which jesus christ manifested then they will be one as the father and son are one the name and then when you go downwards and the glory which thou gave me i have given them that they may be one as we are one. Did you catch that? So, the name is the glory. And the glory is the character of God. And so, the 144 having the Father's name means that they are manifesting the glory of God and the glory of God brothers and sisters was found in the most holy place I want you to follow very carefully that the glory of God was found in the most holy place after the offering were accepted the Shekinah glory filled the temple and so when we speak about manifesting the name of the Father and the 144 being sealed with the name of the Father, then it means that they are manifesting the glory of God, which means that they are in the most holy place and they have no sin because you cannot have sin in the most holy place. That is why they are seen standing with the Lamb on Mount Zion and in their mouth there is no guide for Christ left us an example that we should follow his example and in his mouth was no guide and 144 there is no guide. Brothers and sisters, are you getting what you are learning today? We are looking at the presentation, the final demonstration. Will Christ have a people who just look like him? We know that the remnant of the seed, the seed being Christ himself, if you take a remnant of something, it has to look like that something. And so a quick pointer is that 6,000 years ago, the Father and the Son understood certain plans and arguments and rejected them. 2,000 years ago at Calvary, angels and unfallen ones understood certain plans and arguments and rejected them. And in the time that we are living in, we shall have a people who understand Satan's plan and they will reject it. This time that we are living in. And so, 1 John chapter 2 verses 6 first john chapter 2 that is one john the book of one john chapter 2 verses 6 and i'm coming back to the thing the name he that saith he abideth in him must walk as even he walked. Said he abided in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. And how did Jesus Christ walk? This is the thing that we have to ask ourselves. 
who did no sin, 1 Peter 2.22, neither was guile found in his mouth. And so, the same characteristic or the same character is found with the 144 in Revelation chapter 14, verse 5, that and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Having the same character of Christ. And so, look here. Whoever that saith, he that saith he abideth in him ought to himself also to so to walk even as he walked meaning that there was no girl in his mouth there was no sin in his mouth but we talked about the name and the glory and i want you to look at this look here carefully first john chapter 2 verse 14 final demonstration that is the title of our presentation tonight will the lord have a people who are like him does the bible prove so i have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from beginning i have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of god abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one so they know him and He says, we know the Father's name, character, and glory. And so, let us look at another verse. We praise the Lord for these things because we get encouraged. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Look at John chapter 17 verse 3. John chapter 17 verses 3 and I like you to notice one thing John chapter 17, verses 3 and this is eternal life leave alone the arguments that we have been having for so long and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou have seen Know the Father's name, know His glory and partaking of it. And so what is the secret in knowing the Father and the Son? Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, brothers and sisters. Look here. Second Peter chapter 1. 1 and Two. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. It says, Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. John chapter 17 verse 3 says that this is eternal life that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. Second Peter chapter 1 says that we have obtained like precious faith through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 2, then be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. And so, the knowledge, first of all, by knowing the Father and the Son, obtain precious and through their righteousness. And the knowledge of the Father and the Son multiplies grace and peace. Now, 
you will understand one thing in a minute the knowledge of the father and the son multiplies grace and peace and so the 144 having the father's name they have his glory and they obtain precious faith through the righteousness of god and the savior so the righteousness is not theirs but the righteousness is of the father and the son and then grace and peace is multiplied to them what is this grace and peace which is multiplied by them to, to them first of all i like to look at titus chapter 2 verses 11 2 verses 11 for the grace Let us read from verse 11 to verse 15. Brothers and sisters, we are looking at the final demonstration. Can Christ have a people who like, look like him? The knowledge of the Father and the Son and the name which is the glory actually makes the people righteousness, the righteousness of the Father and the Son, and it multiplies grace in their life. And this grace, we are told, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. The grace of God bringeth salvation, teaching us to that denying ungodliness and world lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So this grace that comes in our hearts enables us and teaches us to deny ungodliness. Now we are told in John chapter 16, when the Spirit comes, he will teach you all things. And so the multiplication of the grace of God is the full imbuing of the Holy Spirit of God unto the saints. Brothers and sisters, are you getting that? And so, for us to have a generation that has the fullness of God, grace must be multiplied in their lives. And what is grace? They must have His grace, the Spirit of Christ. And so, having Father's name brings about the glory and then the righteousness of God and Christ is given unto us and it multiplies grace and this grace is the spirit of Christ in fullness which will be a full-blown latter end in our lives and we shall be able to have the final demonstration. So this grace is the spirit of Christ. Now look here in John chapter 3 verses, sorry, the book of John chapter 3 verses 34 John 3 34 it says for he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God for God giveth him not spirit by measure and so if we will receive also the spirit without measure then we must receive the one that god sent in our hearts and then we shall have the spirit without measure brothers and sisters we are seeing that at the end christ will have a people who can reflect him fully but they need his grace and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come and so this is only enabled when we have the fullness of christ in us the name manifested the name of the father and his glory manifested in us 
And so after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the world, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on earth, on the sea, or all any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God the servants of our God. Now, what is being sealed? What does it mean to be sealed? Let us see. What does it mean to be sealed at that point? Just as soon as the people of God are sealed, faith I live by 287.7. Just as soon as the people of God are sealed in their foreheads, it is not any seal or mark that can be seen, but a settling into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so they cannot be moved just as soon as God's people are sealed and prepared for a shaking, it will come. Indeed, it has, it has begun. Already the judgments of God are now upon the land that we may know what is coming. And so, to be sealed is to settle into truth, both spiritually and intellectually, and how about when the spirit comes it shall lead you in all truth the final demonstration so the servants are sealed in their foreheads and what are they having in their foreheads the father's name is in their foreheads and the father's name we saw in john that it is the glory of the father and it is a transcript of his character. So, to the intent that now the manful wisdom of God might be known by the child to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. A demonstration of what God can do to us by the child. The church have to be a living witness on the earth. The church has not just to be a professing church, but a living church living according to the principles of the core oracles they have received. What is the wisdom of God? What plans are being held? What wisdom of God could possibly require demonstration? What specific needs to be demonstrated? And we see this. So, everything from the ceiling on, to the close of probation, to the time of Jacob's trouble, to the reward of the righteous, it is a demonstration of what Christ is doing to us. In fact, I'll just like to remind you one thing. I know I'm going too fast. Christ's object lesson, page 415, the last message. Look at the last message. We are looking at the presentation, the final demonstration. The last race of merciful light, the last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. The children of God are to manifest his glory. Now you understand that the character of love is the manifestation of the glory of God and that manifestation is the manifestation of his name and the 144 are sealed in the forehead by the Father's name. In their own life and character, they are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. The light of the Son of Righteousness is to shine forth in good works in words of truth and deeds of holiness. Now, you remember that the 144 are sealed with the Father's name in their forehead and this name is holiness, good works. Now, let us look at something else. The book of Exodus chapter 28 verses 36. I hope you are following these things. Will the Lord have a people who are demonstrating? Exodus 28, 36. 
the book of Exodus 20, 28 verses 36. Look here. It says about the high priest. And this is it. What does it say, brothers and sisters? It says, And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave it upon it like the engravings of sickness, holiness to the Lord. And this was placed on the forehead of Aaron. Look here what it says. Continued on, it says that, uh, And thou shalt put it on a blue lace that it may be upon the mitre, upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be, and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead. Brothers and sisters, are you seeing this? It shall be upon what? Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hallow in all their holy gifts, and it shall be always upon his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord, holiness unto the Lord. Let us put these things together now. I hope, brothers and sisters, you are taking notes. We are looking at final demonstration. So, a plate was put on Aaron's forehead, and it was holiness to the Lord, and this made them to be accepted before the Lord. So, Christ manifested the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is the glory, and it is written in the forehead of the 144, and this name, it had the engraving holiness to the Lord, and it made the people be accepted before the Lord. We have a higher calling, brothers and sisters, and we must not let anything come on the way that the Lord has called us. We must not let anything prevent us from attaining to that which the Lord has set upon us. Look at Isaiah chapter 61 verses 10. Then now, Isaiah 61 verses 10, it says, I will do what greatly rejoice in the Lord my soul shall be joyful in my God for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels for as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the gardens causeth the things that are sown in to spring forth so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. So the Lord you saw in the book of Second Peter. Let me just go there again. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter two, verses two. Second Peter. No, first Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter 1, sorry. Second Peter chapter 1, here it is. So, Simon Peter, servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The knowledge of God brought righteousness, make them obtain precious faith through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 says, I'll greatly, I'll greatly rejoice in the Lord. 
My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. That is the knowledge of God, the manifestation of his name and his glory, his own character. And so, the Lord is looking on the earth, those whom he can use to manifest his glory. So, the world is not just waiting for preachers, but the people to justify his government's ruling on the reward of the righteous and the destruction of the wicked, God needs to do three things. Through us, show that there is a good reason some are lost and some are saved. Two, show that the people he wants to take to heaven are safe to have them there. There will be no sin rising or revolution again in heaven. Can then the sealing demonstrate what is needed? Yes, the seal is sealed on the forehead, the 144 had the Father's name on their forehead, and that is the character, that is the glory, that is the manifestation that heaven will have a people who looks like us. So, here we go. The seal of God in Revelation chapter 7 and 9 is contrasted with the mark of the beast. And we know that through the third angel's message, a people, a harvest, there will be this separation of the wheat and the tares, the contrast between the seal of God and the mark of the beast. And so, if the seal of God is contrasted to the mark of the beast, the seal of God is righteousness by faith in verity, the third angel's message. And now, the mark of the beast will be the opposite, righteousness by work. And so, you saw that the knowledge of God brings the righteousness of God and his son Jesus Christ, which brings about the seal of God, not of our own righteousness. And the grace that is multiplied is the spirit of God given fully unto us so that we may be able to sound the loud cry. Now, this spirit of the Father is shared to us through his Son, not for anything good we have done, not for anything good that we have done. Look at the book of Titus then, the book of Titus chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Titus 3, 5 and 6. I hope you are following closely. Can we have a final demonstration on this earth of Christ's righteousness? Look here. From verse 3 to verse 7. Verse 3 to verse 7. And we shall read together. I know you are writing somewhere these things. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done. Remember the knowledge of God made them obtain like precious faith and brought the righteousness of God and Christ, not according to our works. But according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly. Remember that grace was multiplied. This is the shedding forth of the grace abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. The shedding forth of the Spirit. That being justified by his grace, the Spirit, we shall be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. By the way, John chapter 1 says that for those who received him, he gave them power to become the sons of men. Which is this power? The spirit of adoption that cried Abba Father, the fullness of the spirit. This is the demonstration that is being awaited. Are people who have the spirit of Christ in them. And so, we must receive the seal of God. That is the Father's name in our forehead. We must have his glory and we must manifest it, 
not just by preaching but by leaving it so that the glory of the Lord may fill all the earth. Revelation chapter 18 from verses 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. The manifestation of the Father's name in the forehead of the 144. They go forth in the glory of the Father. So the angel coming down, actually we are given the fullness of the Spirit and then we are sealed by the name of the Father which is his glory and then the whole earth will be lightened with his glory. Isaiah chapter 60 Arise and shine Look here The final demonstration What does it mean to have the Father's name on our forehead? It means that having the fullness of the Spirit and having His glory manifesting His character and the angel when it comes down in Revelation chapter 8 Isaiah chapter 6 says arise shine for Revelation 18 says that the all the earth will be filled with the glory of God arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee the name the manifestation of the name the glory for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising so the gentiles shall come to thy light the gentiles shall come to thy light go back to revelation chapter 18 then the earth was lightened with his glory so when we receive the Father's name and manifest it, we are manifesting the light. We are reflecting from the source of all the lights, which is the Father. And so the Father gave the Son the light and the Son gives unto us. Because the Son says that, look at John chapter 17. Again, John 17 verses 11, I believe that... Uh, not 17 but verses 20 to 17 22 and the glory which thou gaveth me i have given them that they may be one as even we are one and when you go to verse c 11 it says and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i have come to thee holy father keep through thine own name they may be one thy own name they may be one look at verse 22 that the glory makes them one so the name the glory is one thing and this glory brings light in us and then matthew chapter 5 verses 14 is fulfilled when we receive the fullness of the glory of god ye are the light of the world now you understand that in john chapter 8 verses 12 christ says that he is the light of the world but this light the glory the character the manifestation of the name he gives to the same so that also they may be able to manifest this the final demonstration this is what the world is waiting brothers and sisters but many are hooked up in uh, in, uh, in arguments, many are hooked up in, uh, uh, what can I say? Instead of pulling together and having the character of God, they are pulling aside. I'd like to show you one thing also. Let me just show you one thing. And this is happening right now as we speak.
Look here, brothers and sisters. I like to show you this. Instead of manifesting the glory of God, this is what is happening. I hope you can see it. This is from Testimonies to the Church, Volume 9, page 258, paragraph 2. The spasmodic, fitful movement of some who claim to be Christians are well represented by the work of a strong but untrained horses. When one pulls forward, another pulls back, and at the voice of their master, one plunges ahead, and the other stands immovable. If men will not move in concert in the great and grand work for this time, there will be confusion. It is not a good sign when men refuse to unite with their brethren and prefer to act alone. Let laborers take into their confidence the brethren who are free to point out every departure from right principles. If men wear the yoke of Christ, they cannot pull apart, they will draw with Christ. Some workers pull with all the power that God has given them, but they have not yet learned that they should not pull alone. Instead of isolating themselves, let them draw in harmony with their fellow laborers. Unless they do this, their activity will work at the wrong time in the wrong way. They will often work counter to that which God would have done, and thus their work is worse than wasted. Now, when you go to John chapter 17, the prayer of Jesus Christ was unity. Unity in what? In manifesting the name of the Father, and then the name is the glory, it brings light, and then the grace is multiplied, which is the fullness of receiving His Spirit, and this knowledge is a man to make the saints obtain a like precious faith which is given unto them the righteousness of the Father and the Son. That is Second Peter chapter 1 verses 2. And so what we need right now is the unifying spirit of Christ. And look at 18... 88 messages, 903 paragraph 10. This is what it says. What we want is the spirit of Jesus. When we have this, we shall love one another. Here are the credentials that we are to bear. By this shall men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one to another, we need to pray more. And when we have Christ abiding in the soul, his spirit in me will harmonize with the spirit in you. And he who controls our minds controls also the heavenly intelligences and they cooperate with us. Then in every council you will have the presence of one might in council. Jesus will be there. There will be no contention, no strife, no string, stirring up of the worst passion of the heart. What we want is to find refuge in Jesus. What we want is to be converted and how I have longed for the converting power of God to go through our assemblies. I fear that some will never be converted, not because God is not willing to convert them, but because they have eyes and yet see not, ears they have, but they hear not. This is a pure Laodician condition. Professing to have eyes, they see not, Professing to have ears, they hear not. They have understanding and yet understand not. They are too proud to acknowledge their errors and in contrition of heart seek God in repentance. Now shall we put away this impertinent spirit? Shall we fall on the rock and be broken? Jesus is soon coming. Now not many people believe that Christ is coming. That is why they continue in the way they continue. They do not want to do the final demonstration of what Christ is doing in the most holy place. What is he doing now? He is testing our people here upon the earth to see if they can live in harmony without revolt in heaven. Look here what Christ is doing. Now the final demonstration is for people to make sure they can live in heaven without revolting. But if they can live here in harmony, then it means that in heaven there will be revolution. But we are told in the book of Nahum 1.9, that book you know it very well, Nahum 
1 verses 9. We are told what you imagine of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, what you imagine against the Lord, he will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. No sin is going to be there in heaven. And so those who are to live in the earth in the final time have to make sure that they will live in harmony and no revolution will be in heaven. A perfect example of the name, the manifestation, manifestation of the name and the glory of Christ is given with Jacob. Look here. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Now, something in Revelation. This is in the book of Revelation. I hope I get it. In the book of Revelation chapter 3, verses 12. Revelation chapter 3, verses 12. The final demonstration. Having the Father's name, having the Father's glory, having the light and the grace multiplied in us. Look here in Revelation chapter 12, chapter 3, verses 12. Brothers and sisters, we must let the Spirit of God guide us in such a time as this. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I'll write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of God, which is new Jerusalem, which cometh down of heaven from my God, and I'll write upon him my new name. That is a manifestation of the Father's name and the Son's name, the glory. And so, he says, I'll make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall no more, he shall go no more out. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Verses 15. Talking about not going out of the temple no more. He says, Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple. They, not, they do not go out. Why? Because they are manifesting or they have manifested the name of the Father. This is the final generation that the demonstration that we have to have so that we must be able to enter into the pearly gates. So, what is so special about this final generation that has to manifest the Father's name and the glory of the Father's name and His glory? What is so special about them? Let us look here. He says, what is so special? Millions have faced death for their faith. What is the difference here with this final generation? This is not the normal test of martyrdom because at this time, with no high priest to intercede in the heavenly sanctuary, the 144 feel no sense of God's abiding presence. They must stand before the Lord without a high priest, yet not without a protector. And if there is no high priest in the temple, what does this mean? 
offerings are not going there. And if offerings are not going there, what is happening? If the offerings are not going in the temple, brothers and sisters, what is happening? The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 17. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 17. I'd like you to notice. If this special number have to manifest the name, the glory, the grace of God, what is so special is so special with them unlike the other people they have to stand without a high priest in the heavenly sanctuary and without the high priest in the heavenly sanctuary it means that sins are not going there and if sins are not going there look at what the book of hebrews says this is the covenant that i'll make with them hebrews 10 16 after those days said the lord i'll put my laws in their hearts and their minds will i write them what is in the mind or in the forehead the father's name verse 17 and their iniquities will i remember no more why verse 18 now where remission of this is there is no more offering of sin so without the high priest in the sanctuary there is no more offering of sin without the high priest there's no more offering of sin this means their sins have been remitted not only covered but washed when there is no offering for sin no high priest in the sanctuary the sins are remitted they are forgiven and they are walking in righteousness which means no sin from these people who are doing the final demonstration is going in the heavenly sanctuary because they have been remitted and they have victory this is the final demonstration we are talking about and so those who pass those who live in the last days what is so special about them those who live in the last days must pass through an experience similar to that of jacob force will be all around them ready to condemn and destroy alarm and despair will seize them for it appears to them as to jacob in his distress that god himself has become an avenging enemy yet they wrestle with god and without sin and so Everyone on earth at this time is familiar with this gospel. Only those who have faith pass the test. And all those who have faith passes the test. The test, that is, they have gotten victory in Christ. They are different because they keep the Sabbath. And they have all these things that needed to pass them through Jacob's time of trouble. And so, the final battle, the final battle, will Jesus have a people? Yes, he says that the one who said, whoever comes to me, I'll by no means cast out. He will have a people who will demonstrate. The one who has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He will have a people. Notwithstanding that Satan has been constrained to a knowledge of God's justice and to bow the supremacy of Christ, his character remains unchanged. The spirit of rebellion like a mighty torrent again bursts forth. He rushes into the midst of subject and endeavors to inspire them with his own fury. This is speaking about the end time. But God will have a people. Let us bring this to a close. The choice is ours. Will we be part of the people who will make the final demonstration or will we be part of the people who will not make the final demonstration? Look to me, says the Lord, and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return 
that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath, he shall say, Surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. To him men shall come, and all shall be ashamed who are increased against him. Let me see if I can give you the last verse in the book of Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah chapter oh, 50 verses 20. This is our last verse. The choice is ours. And God is, Christ himself is waiting for a manifestation of himself in his church. The last verse. In those days and in that time, which days and which times? The days we are living in and the times that we are living, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. The Lord says that I set before thee life and death. Choose ye today life that you may not perish. I do pray that uh, brothers and sisters we shall be amongst the people who shall have this final demonstration. We shall be amongst those who shall not fear the pestilence by day. The Lord who has said that be ye perfect, he has not told us to be something that we cannot achieve. He himself will make sure that he has a people. If there is anything that has been actually giving you problems, look unto Jesus. You know, the problem has always been we look unto ourselves. When we look at self, it is only a fault. But when we look at Christ, 2 Corinthians 3.18, we are changed from glory to glory. But when we look at self, when Peter looked at himself, he sank, he started sinking. When Satan looked at himself, he fell from heaven. When Eve and Adam looked at themselves, that was the fall of man. The only way we can have victory, manifest the name of the Lord, and have the glory and the grace which is the spirit of Christ multiplied in us, it is beholding Christ. When we behold ourselves, we cannot be changed. But if we behold Christ, we can be changed. I pray this evening, I pray wherever you are, that you will be a part of the group that shall have the final demonstration. What final demonstration? The revelation of the character of love, of Jesus, what he has done for you, and what he's doing through you. May you be encouraged, and may you give your heart to God. We are living in perilous time where there is no time to sin, where there is no time to love the things of the world. Seek ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We are living in such a time that are so solemn, the door of probation is lingering upon us. And we don't have to rush to God because of fear. We have to see God as our loving Father. We have to see Christ as our, our God of salvation. Christ is indeed God. In Him there is the fullness of divinity. And that divine nature is what He gives unto us. He received from the Father so that He may give unto us. And I know, by God's grace, you will be there and I will be there. Not of my good works, not unto us, not unto us, but unto thy holy name, Lord we come this evening and we know that we can be given victory in him let us pray heavenly father we thank you you have not called us into something which is impossible 
you have called us into something that is possible. And what is impossible with men, it is possible with the Heavenly Father. Change us, convert us once again. Help us to demonstrate that we have Christ abiding presence living, not around us, not amongst us, but in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Fill us with the spirit, not the spirit of fear, so you say, but we have been given the spirit that breaks the stronghold of Satan and uproots the darkness of the powers of the prince of this world. And so far, if there is anything in our hearts that we have not submitted unto thee, take it out. Help us to surrender unto thee this day. It is in Christ Jesus' name we ask of these things. Amen.